The first time I wrote a novel, I spent quite a lot of time wondering if I was doing it right. I wrote prose chapter after prose chapter thinking, are my chapters long enough? Can I change the perspective? Does it all have to feel and read exactly the same for it to be a proper novel? As you can probably imagine, wasn't the most productive process. What I should have done is not worry about any of that and instead write whatever I thought was best for my story, however I thought was best, including weird stuff. Because there is, of course, more than one way to write a story. In fact, I'd venture to guess that there's infinite ways to write a story. So let's talk about some of the things you can do to create a story, aside from just simple prose passage after simple prose passage. Let's get started. To get a grasp on how to tell a story, I always ask myself, what's the point of what I'm writing? And the answer to that never changes. The point of writing a novel isn't writing a novel in a certain exact way or doing things perfectly, or just including what you think you should include, or what other people include. The point of writing a novel isn't actually writing a novel. The point of it is to tell a story, and that should come before everything else. So I think, as writers, it should be our aim to tell that story in the most effective way that we possibly can, and that sometimes means doing things a bit differently from just continuous prose. There's of course nothing wrong with books like that though. If a writer can write a full novel in that way, all the time keeping it interesting to read and also to write, that just speaks to the talent of the writer and the hard work that they've had to put into it, as well as the strength of their story. You absolutely don't have to do things differently just for the sake of it. However, for me personally, whenever I've tried to write a novel like that, which is seven times now, as well as a few failed attempts, I found that sooner or later I became bored with how I was telling the story. Maybe you felt the same way, that creeping, uncomfortable feeling that you're getting words down but there's just no magic behind them. That you're sitting down to write and you're finding only the hard work that comes with writing and none of the excitement. Something I figured out from writing all those novels is that those times when I wasn't excited to write what I was writing, the reader wasn't excited to read it either. So how do we keep things interesting in longer work, even for ourselves? How do we make every chapter or section or part of what we're writing feel fresh and exciting to read and to write as well? First and foremost, by writing a story that we're passionate about and that's well thought out, but even then sometimes we'll still need to stir things up, so what do we do then? Whatever we want. We can include or exclude all manner of story elements because there are no rules. You can write a news article and add that into your book. You can have your character discover and read some old letters. You can show access logs from a spacecraft. You can write audio transcripts from what was happening during a bank heist. There's all manner of story elements that you can add into your book if it makes sense for the story that you're telling, if it moves the plot forward or if it makes the reader feel something. It might even be something that's never been done before that you decide to add into your book and that's okay. In fact, that's better than okay. An example of this that I've talked about before might be repeating myself, is The Martian. It changes perspective, it changes tenses, there are communication logs, there's messages back and forth. And when you're reading it, it doesn't matter that it's not just prose chapter after prose chapter. Not once did I question that the story was coming to me from different sources and angles, because it makes sense for the story and I was enjoying what I was reading. The story gives me, as a reader, what I want to know and what I need to know about the story in the clearest and most entertaining way when I need it. If the author had just stuck to simple first person narration and kept that through the entire book, he would have had to figure out some way to recount in internal monologue the conversation between one character and another on a messaging system. That's so contrived that I can hardly say it, never mind write it, so the conversation is just there for you to read. Simple. I hate that feeling that what I'm writing is just on cruise control. Always the same speed and pace that never changes. Add-ins like that can vary that pace and stop all of the good stuff from settling at the bottom. I'm mixing metaphors, but what I'm saying is, again, there are no rules. Your characters can note things down from a textbook. They can overhear a conversation or listen to a radio broadcast. They can copy out blueprints. They can comb through audit logs to find the one piece of data they need to solve a mystery. It's all storytelling, and if you want to create something or show something like that but you feel restricted by the perspective that you're in or the form that your story has so far taken, change it. Just try it. 
I bet you can probably even think of a book that you've read that does this as well. And if you can, let me know what it is in the comments below because I love this type of thing. A chapter can be a sentence. A perspective can just be used once for 10 lines and never looked at again. Every second chapter in your book can be a recipe if you want. As long as it works for your story and it has the desired effect, do it. I used to worry that doing that would make my books feel disorderly or uneven and that I might lose the overall feeling I was trying to get across with what I was writing. But the thing is, I was looking at that like a writer, not a reader. I could see all the scaffolding that was holding the story together and all of the nuts and bolts. The reader doesn't see any of that. They're looking at the finished product and they're less likely to be worried about the maybe slightly odd form that your story's taken and they're more likely to be thinking about how immersed in your story they feel and how much they're enjoying it. Plus, when a reader picks up a novel or an ebook, it's as one contained unit. And that in itself tells them that all of this stuff is related. So as long as your story is strong enough, they won't worry too much about how this is all connected. They'll just trust you to connect the dots for them. Or they won't even think about it at all and they'll just read. You don't need an excuse to add things in that aren't traditional prose, if that alone is gonna feel restrictive to write or just not gonna feel right in some way. I'm not saying be weird for the sake of weirdness or that you can just throw anything you want at your book and it doesn't matter. I'm saying when you're writing your book, always keep one eye on what the point of your story is and how you can get that across to your reader in the most effective way possible. If that is chapter by chapter prose, go for it because it's right for your story. But if you do wanna do things differently and present your book in a slightly different way, you can do that. It's the 2020s. The classics, as great as they are, were written for an entirely different readership than our own. Trends change, but not from playing it safe, from innovation and risk taking. The definition of a novel, however slowly, is widening. It always has. We should feel free as writers to try and find the edges of that if we want. Feel free to also find my website, which has details about my writing and my community and my flash fiction course. I want to say thanks for watching as always and happy writing.